right, so here we are at RMAF 2011 with Jerry Harvey, founder, leader, uh, and guru behind JH Audio. Uh, probably the best custom molds in the industry right now, and really some of our favorite products that we've ever had at Headroom. Uh, Jerry, welcome to RMAF 2011. Thanks to doing Headroom TV. Thanks for having me. Let's, what do you want to talk about? Let's talk about some of your stuff. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, I know last year when we were here, we kind of did a little breakdown between the 13 Pro and the 16 Pro. And that proved to be a pretty popular video. It certainly kind of broke it down for a lot of folks. That's the question that we get at Headroom a lot. What were those two differences? I think we cleared that up pretty good. This year, the exciting news is the release of uh, the JH3A, uh, which has been in production kind of in a, in a weird hold pattern for a little bit. And you finally got it out. Uh, tell us a little bit about that trajectory, what led you into the JH3A, and where you guys stand with it today. OK. Well. Originally, well, and the reason, the main reason that I designed it 3A is that I wanted a tool to make a perfect deer piece, and there's no other amp out there that gives me the control that the 3A gives me to, to, to tune an earpiece, basically. I can make the earpiece time correct, EQ correct, and it gives you the ability to take the bottom end either uh, totally flat in two-way mode, or if you kick the bass amp on, it starts out at plus 4 dB and goes all the way to plus 14 dB with the volume control of the bass amp. So it's pretty... Uh, it's a, it's a very innovative way to do and a crossover network. Uh, some of my customers, for a number of reasons, I've changed the design of the amp, but one of the reasons is because my customers didn't want an earpiece that was married to the amplifier. In the original first two versions, you had to have the earpiece plugged into the amplifier. If you unplugged the earpiece from the amplifier, it was, it was dead. It was, you know, if you didn't have the amp, you couldn't use the earpiece. Yeah, it was kind of a set. Yeah, so what we've done is I've created an inverse, tri-powered, basically, crossover and I have all the control of an active DSP crossover with the benefit of being able to use the earpiece on its own with an adapter cable to plug into an iPod and iPad. You can make a balance cable for it or whatever because we go from the 8-pin to the mini jack or you can go from 8-pin to any connector you like. So basically the 8-pin, um, the, the, the earpiece has four conductors, uh, common ground, low, mid and high and each of those, each of those speakers has its own amplifier. But what's nice is if you take this piece out like this, you put the adapter on, and we bond the low, mid, and high passive crossover together, and you end up with a perfectly normal 16 passively crossed over that you can plug into anything. Obviously, this is just a little cheap connector. It's a prototype, so when we ship this thing, it'll have switchcraft on both ends, and so it'll be a nice, solid connector. But like I said, this is an 8-pin connector, very versatile. If you wanted to use balanced ground, you could wire it to a 4-pin. If you wanted to use it with a balanced amp, you could wire it to a balanced connector. It's very, very versatile. So we've basically broken the earpiece up. Um, all the wiring in the earpiece is you know, terminated to this 8-pins. Really a revolutionary product and something that um, I think really is going to open up the avenue for people to get in the JHA. As you said before, the, I think the, the previous prototype, you know, you had that married uh, kind of partnership between the two and the fact that this is so flexible and so completely, you know, you can use it as you see fit. Um, that's really a huge advancement. So tell us a little bit about the trajectory of building the amp and um, what you had to encounter to, to get to this point. Well, you know, I've, I kind of jokingly call the amp the, the nemesis. It's not the 3A internally. But, uh, you know, about 18 months ago, we started with one developer that you know, convinced me we could build this product. We made a prototype and everybody was excited and I was probably more excited than everyone else. So we announced we were gonna make it, you know. So here we are three developers later and the thing's finally gonna ship next Wednesday. So. It's uh, big news, man. It's huge news, trust me. It's yeah. like, uh, it's, um, it's a great weight off our shoulders because we're just, you know, every day we're just pushing this thing and it seemed like the harder we pushed, the less results we got. But finally, everything came together. Um, I'm really happy about the, the way that we've done this redesign of the amp also because it's very innovative, it's patentable. We've already put a provisional patent in on it. No one's ever done this this way. And you know, in audio, there's many ways to skin a cat to get the same result. I think this is a really cool way to do it. You know, I had, you know, like I said, I had many reasons that I had to do it, but um, you know, I think that the end result is an earpiece that sounds just as good, if not better, than an actively controlled earpiece. Um, because it does have active control, it's just not an active crossover. Um, the earpiece is in perfect time, perfect phase. Um, and what's kind of cool is when you, if you look at a block diagram of a normal active crossover PA earphone or whatever, it would have the audio in, then you would have the dividing network, and the amplifier would, the low amplifier would put out, let's say, 20 to 200, 200 to 4K would be the mid amp, and then from 4K on up would be the high amp. 
so the filters would actually live in the DSP in this amp, and then the amps would go to the speakers. So basically, all I've done is inverted the process. I still have the DSP chips. I have amp one, two, and three. Amp one becomes low amp. Amp two becomes mid amp. Amp three becomes high amp. But preamp, the I have the DSP circuit. So what I do there is I take number one amp, which becomes the low amp, and I do all of my equalization and and my gain there. So I can actually put the 50 hertz bump that I want in it. And I do my scoop in the low mids to make sure where they cross the crossover points meet, that I have that nice transition from you know sub to low mid without all the masking frequencies. And then I also can I can actually time align the mid to the low when the mid amp, and then I time align the high to the mid, so we end up with a phase correct earpiece. And each band has equalization, gain, and time. And you know, so that's in the earpiece, that's really what's crucial is having a time time you know sure. time correct, phase correct, and equalized to be a perfect earpiece. So that's you know, it doesn't matter. The speaker doesn't know where the crossover divide happens. If it happens, as long as it happens before the speakers. Like I said, traditionally it's preamp. Mm -hmm. We're actually doing a post amp, but we're still still doing all the DSP preamp. So, so that's a total game changer for for any product that's never been really anything kind of even close to what you're doing here. Yeah, no one's ever done anything like this, and um, and I'm really proud of it. It's like you know, sometimes you know, the universe you know works in your favor and. It wasn't ready to ship, now it's ready to ship. So, you know, it's the universe was telling you something for the past couple of years. It was dragging his feet. The harder I pushed, the harder it pushed back. But now we're good, you know, it's yeah. awesome. Well, we are super stoked to have your products and um, we couldn't be, be happier to be partnering with JH Audio and Jerry Harvey. Headroom TV with Jerry Harvey Audio. Nice Thanks. To see you.